One, two, three, there we go, all right. Hey, thanks for the invite, guys. And uh, one of the greatest pleasures that I have in life is presenting to referral partnerships on a weekly basis. I talk to realty groups, I talk to financial advisors, home care providers, divorce attorneys, estate planners, tax planners, CPAs. The list goes on and on of people who could benefit and their clients could benefit by using a reverse mortgage. And one of the great pleasures is having people come back to me and say, I didn't know a reverse mortgage could do that. So I, I hope you got some of that already with Wade Fowle's presentation. Um, I do want to tell you a Wade Fowle story. Um, I used to come out here four days out of every month to San Diego to teach a reverse mortgage class. And I'm on the East Coast, so if I want to watch a college football game, it's kind of unusual to watch a game at 9 o'clock in the morning. So there's a place around the corner here where I could watch the Penn State football games at 9 o'clock on a Saturday. And so I showed up, uh, local Penn State Alumni Association chapter president was there, and he goes, hey, new guy, what do you do? And I said, I'm in the reverse mortgage business. Immediately, he ignores me and starts preaching Wade Fowl concepts to everybody in the room. He said, this Wade Fowl book, you got to get it. If you're 62 and older, he starts talking about sequence risk and portfolio management and coordination strategies. And I'm thinking, uh, he didn't even come back to me. So I'm sitting in the corner thinking, he's starting a revival with about 200 Penn State fans. <laughs> in a bar at 9 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. And so uh, I texted Wade and I said, you're never going to believe what's happening right now. And that's when I really found the, the power of the message. Thanks to Wade for presenting today. Good job, right? <clears throat> Very good content. And you know what's great about this content? It doesn't come from the mortgage space. We don't have to say this stuff. It's in the Journal of Financial Planning and uh, Barry Sachs and Dr. Salter and some of the others. It's nice that it doesn't come from us because it seems very self-serving, right? So uh, let's go ahead and talk about some of the hidden advantages of today's reverse mortgage. And I'm going to talk really from a, a mortgage standpoint. Let's go ahead and start with. Now, Wade already covered some of the basics, and he did a very good job of it. But really, in a nutshell, if you want to know what a reverse mortgage is, it's any lien secured by a home where repayment is deferred sometime into the future, usually when the last borrower dies and the heirs sell the home. That's a reverse mortgage. It doesn't have to be a HECM. There are some good proprietary products here in California. But if you want that line of credit growth, which we're going to talk about, the HECM, HECM product is the one for you. And so when we talk about, um, and yes, it's about 98, 99% of the industry right now is the home equity conversion mortgage. And this one slide encapsulates what a HECM is. It's a federally, it's, in fact, it's the only federally insured reverse mortgage product in America. It does have an age requirement. As uh, Wade mentioned, you do have to be 62 and older to be a borrower. Now, I've done two presentations in Beverly Hills over the last two months. And they said, well, how young can the non-borrowing spouse be? I said, is, is, that a, is that an issue here? And so I gave them an example. A 65-year-old married to a 55-year-old. And they said, no, no, keep going. Keep going. And I said, really? OK, well, my, um, uh, the data actually goes down to age 18, which is the U zone. You know, That's younger than my daughter. But um, yes, we do protect non-borrowing spouses. And we protect their ability to stay in the home with the Heckin product. Now, what does it do? It allows us, as a lender, to convert a percentage or a portion of their home's value into cash. Or what we really like to see is that growing line of credit, because then it plays into all of the financial planning advantages. Now, I'm going to put three more bullet points on the screen. The homeowner continues to hold title and ownership of the home. I can't stress that enough. Because if I were to walk down the streets of San Diego right now and find anybody with gray hair, and say, why aren't you considering a reverse mortgage when you, you're age and equity eligible? Well, I don't want the, the bank to take ownership of my home. That is not how a reverse mortgage works. Okay, the Heckam product has never taken ownership um, uh, or title of the home. Uh, the homeowner is also not required to make a monthly principal and interest mortgage payment. However, little caveat, bullet number three, they have to occupy and maintain the home, and they have to pay all property charges. That's the reverse mortgage in a nutshell. So that's, the, that's basically the foundation that we're working from today. But now I want to talk to you about what are the hidden advantages of the Heckam product. 
And I think I got five today. Do I have five? Let's start with the first one. The HECM provides more managed assets over a longer time. If you're an advisor today, you're thinking, okay, that's, that's good for me, right? You're not gonna notice that in the first month. You probably won't notice it in the first couple years. But when your client, who's expected to run out of money at age 85, still has money at age 105 because of the reverse mortgage, then that really makes a big difference for you, right? There's three people that are uh, very concerned about running out of money. It's the client, their kids, and their advisor. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so yeah, advisors win in this scenario, but really the client wins. You create value for the client. The more assets that you can manage over a longer time period means the client's gonna win. Second point, a HECM represents retirement cash flow that is not taxed as income. From a compliance standpoint, I have to be very careful how I say that, but there is no federal or state agency that considers draws from, a home, from your home equity as something to be taxed. Now, if you're a CPA in this group today, that's of great importance to you. A non-taxable source of retirement cash flow, well, what can you do with that? You can manage someone's adjusted gross income or modified adjusted gross income. We talked about Irma, right, earlier. These are just some of the key hidden advantages of the Heckin product, and then we're gonna go into some case studies. It offers a safer and more secure funding source. Safer than what? Safer than a HELOC? Do not put a senior in a HELOC. Okay, it commits them to a monthly payment, and the HELOC is nothing more than an umbrella that gets taken away when it starts to rain. Did anybody lose their HELOC in 2008? Wow, look at that, I lost mine. I was furious. I had it for like two or three months in 2008. It was gone. So is that a secure funding source if they need to access some of their home equity? Not in the least, okay, because it's contingent on their property maintaining its value. The HECM is not contingent on the property maintaining its value. Now, what, is it safer than a 30-year fixed? Oh, yeah. Please, do not put a 70-year-old in a 30-year fixed and saddle them a payment for the rest of their life. We can't be doing that. Right? The HECM is a much more uh, safe and secure funding source than either of those options. Now, if you're a real estate agent, or if you have your uh, DRE here in, um, in the state of California, this is a very important topic for you. Yes, we can allow, the HECM can allow one to purchase another home in retirement. There are two ways you can do that. You can get a reverse mortgage on your existing principal residence. I'm gonna get a reverse mortgage here and I'm gonna take some of that money and I'm gonna go buy myself a second home or investment property. It's perfectly all right to do that. You can grab some of that equity and you can buy a second home or investment property all day long. We see people do it routinely. However, you can also sell your existing residence and relocate or upsize or downsize into the home that meets your needs, closer to the kids and grandkids, in another geographic area that suits your needs, Maybe to one that doesn't have two flights of stairs. Do we want to put a, a widow with a hip replacement, keep, th keep them in their uh, two-story home on a full basement on five acres? Probably not, okay? Something with the owner suite on the main, something a little more manageable. And so we see people downsize or right size, as we call it, to another home in retirement using the reverse mortgage. That's another hidden advantage. The last one on this list, and uh, Wade referenced this, the unused proceeds will grow over time. Remind me, I will cover why uh, HUD still allows the line of credit to grow. So we'll talk about that here in a moment. The line of credit growth is fascinating and is probably the most powerful aspect of the reverse mortgage that a lot of people don't understand. And, and Wade did a great job explaining this. But there are two types of growth with the reverse mortgage. HUD does not have a label for this. And so about 10 years ago, I created a term. I thought, okay, I'm an author on the topic, so let's see if it sticks. And it did. I started calling it organic growth. And that's what Wade was talking about, is the line of credit will grow organically at the interest rate plus a half a percent. That's on new loans. There was a period of time between 2013 and 2017 where they had one and a quarter growth on top of the um, interest rate. Okay, but take a look at this example right here. This, by the way, was a, I believe it was a 65-year-old borrower with a million-dollar home with a $130,000 loan balance in red and a $220,000 
line of credit in green. Both elements of the reverse mortgage grow at the same rate. And you look at that graph and you think, wait a second, is the green line breaking away? No, the ratio is still the same. They both grow at the same rate. It's just we're playing with bigger dollars on the line of credit in this case. Now, you can see over a 30-year window, if the client does nothing at all, they don't take draws from the line of credit and they don't make prepayments to reduce their loan balance and increase their line of credit. That line of credit is going to push the limits of $2 million at today's rates. $2 million, is that pretty useful after 30 years? Okay, So that's organic growth. There is a second type of growth. It's an overlay on top of this. You're going to get the organic growth, but what about if I want to make prepayments? There is no required payment. So in the reverse mortgage space, we call them prepayments. We call them voluntary prepayments. Would it make sense for someone to make a payment periodically? Maybe, especially when interest rates are high. Right? Maybe you want to knock down that uh, loan balance in red a little bit. This is the same borrower on the right side of the screen. All we did is we said, why don't you make the same payment you're making now, $2,000 a month, and you do it for the next six years, age 65 to 71. It's something they're doing anyway. They're probably making more than that in payments. We say, you know what? Why don't you make a $2,000 payment every month? Now, does anyone really do that? It's very rare. They'll make payments annually. They'll make payments every three years, so they get a massive 1098 deduction. We'll talk about that in a little bit. With a reverse mortgage, you can do that. You have the flexibility to make payments anytime you want. But here's an example of someone who does. Now take a look at 30 years from now. Wait, all they did was pay $2,000 a month for the next six years, and suddenly we're pushing $3 million in the line of credit? That's the power of compounded growth on that line of credit because I made prepayments. Pretty powerful, right? My plan, by the way, uh, you know, I've been talking for years. I got seven years to go before I qualify for my reverse mortgage. My plan, I'm going to make payments every three years. I'm going to itemize on my taxes in those years. I'm also going to do all my charitable giving in that year. I'm going to get a massive deduction in that year, potentially a deduction that's larger than any income that I have. Good time to do a Roth conversion, right? Great strategy. Tuck that one away. OK, what are the possible results for your clients? Well, if I get them a reverse mortgage and I pay off their existing mortgage, they instantly have more cash flow. Check, oops, check that box, right? These are check boxes. Can we give them more cash flow? Yeah, we just paid off their existing mortgage. Whatever that mortgage payment is, that's their instantaneous increase in cash flow. Check the box. Number two, can we give them more liquidity? Well, if we paid off their existing mortgage and closing costs, and there's more principal limit left over, well, then they have a line of credit that's growing. So can we check box number two? Yeah. Now we can offer more liquidity through retirement. Now, we have this growing line of credit. Can you use it as part of a coordinated strategy like Wade was talking about? Can you draw from that in certain years? You can, and it's not taxable. So can we lower our taxes? Absolutely we can. Check that box. Now, can we offer them higher net worth? We have no idea. That's kind of a wild card. We don't know what's going to happen with their, their um, investments, with their home value. Can we guarantee that? No, but we see cases all the time, and we run through Monte Carlo simulations that prove, yeah, it can happen. In some cases, it's likely to happen. I would add one more to this list, more security. Because we hear cases of loan originators putting someone in a 30-year fix at age 70, and then their spouse dies, and it leaves them with reduced income. And they realize, wait, I can't afford this house anymore? And they foreclose. So we do see devastating cases where they should be in a reverse mortgage. I would say that's another possible result for your client is we can offer them more security with this product. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, use some alliteration here. And Carl and Kathy have no cash flow. All right, we're going to use some examples, and I'm going to show how this actually works in practice, how some of your C2 certified uh, reverse mortgage loan originators are going to look at your client. All right, now let's say Ka Carl and Kathy have a mortgage balance of $225,000. Pretty common for us. All right, this is a million dollar house. Uh, mortgage balance of $225,000, revolving debt of $25,000, installment debt of $25,000. We cannot pay off revolving debt and installment debt at closing but we can give them enough cash in this example that they can do it. 
All right, so their required payments right now under their current status, $3,000, which leaves them with no cash flow. How are they going to implement a Dave Ramsey snowball? You can't. It's not going to work, right? There's nothing that this client can do. In fact, they're probably doomed to be in debt for the rest of their lives. These clients really have no option out. Now, the reverse mortgage is the solution. Yeah, how's that for a snowball? So we're going to pay that off. And you're thinking, 300000 why 300000 There are costs with a reverse mortgage. And we don't shy away from talking about the costs. What are we getting for that cost? Yeah, in this case, we're saying $25,000. You'd have to run the numbers and see what that is. But um, a mortgage balance that's higher than their current debt load, what are they getting for paying those closing costs? They're getting a non-recourse loan at extremely competitive interest rates that doesn't require a monthly principal and interest mortgage payment until, in some cases, a year after they're dead. Is that powerful? Would you take advantage of that? Absolutely, I would. I'd pay $25,000 for that product right now if I qualified, but I'm not old enough. Now, take a look at the end result. Required payments, nothing. Okay? They now have cash flow of 3000 when they had none. Now, what can we do with that? All right, now you're thinking, OK, I have additional cash flow. What's the next step? Well, I have a list. I have things that I would want people to knock off. OK, well, pay off your revolving debt. Well, we just did it. We already accomplished that. Pay off your installment debt. We did that, too. OK, we gave them enough money to do that. Um, Establish emergency fund? Yeah, that's probably something you want to do is make sure that you have uh, liquidity moving forward. We did that too. They have a line of credit. And if they request money from the line of credit, the servicer is required to give it to them within five business days. Is that liquid? Yeah. If the lender doesn't give it to them with five business days, they get a 10% penalty paid to them plus a per diem. So you're going to get your money. If you want money from this line of credit, it's guaranteed it's going to be there. You're going to get it. So we already have an emergency fund. And when Wade was talking about a buffer asset, most buffer assets, you have to take money out of the retirement portfolio to have it, right? You have to keep money on the sidelines in order to have a buffer asset. We have a buffer asset that you can have within five business days that doesn't require you to take money out of the market. Isn't that nice? So what do we do from there? If you're an advisor in the group, what would you do? I don't know, maybe you talk to the, I'm not an advisor. So that's not my business, but my list would be, why are you drawing so much from your IRA and 401k? Let's make it last a little longer. Let's reduce our withdrawal rates. Wade Fowl showed you how sensitive withdrawal rates are. That's shocking to think that all I have to do is take a little bit less and suddenly my money's gonna last me uh, my lifetime and more. OK, so I would probably start with reducing draws from my uh, retirement savings. Maybe you want to talk to the client about their long-term care planning. Maybe you want to optimize their life insurance needs. I would think those are probably three things you want to address right away, the moment they're out of trouble. What about completing home improvements to make, the, make sure that the home is, is proper for aging in place? And we've heard that less than 10% of America's homes actually are designed for aging in place. So maybe we update the bathroom for their physical limitations. We put in a handicap ramp. We put in a stair lift. We do the things that make the home more livable as you age. I would think that's probably a priority. Should you pay down the reverse mortgage? I will. I'm going to do it strategically in certain calendar years. I, I'll have a plan. I'll have a spreadsheet. I'll be contacting Wade Fow in the middle of the night saying, hey, what should I do here? Um, what about enjoying life? You know, your house is rich, you are too. Maybe you should spend a little bit, bit of that money enjoying your retirement a little bit more. Get that country club membership back. You know, take a few trips. We have people that will travel to see the kids and grandkids. We have others that will travel to get away from the kids and grandkids. <laughs> Any of you have to do some babysitting every once in a while that you don't want to have to do? Yeah, put me on a cruise. Get me away from the kids. There are types of investments you want, might want to look at. Maybe you want to invest in other types of real estate. How about gifting with a warm hand rather than a cold hand? Okay, I know Shane nodding his head. He uses that one all the time. Okay, so assist your kids and your grandkids. You know why they're not buying houses right now? Because they'd have to put more money down to actually make it affordable. 
can you help them if you're a senior that has an extra few hundred thousand dollars in a line of credit? Sure you can. Okay, use that money to help your kids and grandkids. And then a lot of people are going to say, well, I can now resume charitable giving. When Carol, Carl and Kathy had no option for charitable giving up until that point. All right, that's the first case study. Let's take a look at the second one. Harry and Helen, they're going to need home care. We know that most people are going to need it. Harry and Helen will likely need home care. Now, they don't have a policy, and we know why. It's either the long-term care policy is too expensive and they can't afford it, or, hey, they don't qualify. Yeah, maybe they don't qualify for a long-term care policy. Either way, the reverse mortgage, the Heckam line of credit, can either pay for a policy that's existing or wanted, or the reverse mortgage line of credit becomes the policy. So if you show that, okay, you could have an extra $200,000, would that help pay for long-term care? Yeah, I think so. So um, remember, the unused proceeds of a line of credit are growing. It grows at this current interest rate plus a half a percent. Um, let me address, I, I didn't, I, let me go back to that because we talked about just briefly the line of credit, yeah, 2013 to 2017, savvy loan originators and brokers and savvy homeowners were looking at it saying, hey, it's structured so that you could give me a really high lender margin at the time, and it's the interest rate plus one and a quarter percent. And so there were a lot of people trying to game the system so that they could have a $3 million line of credit, and we're only projecting the home to be worth maybe 1.5 million at that time. And uh, at the time, HUD called it the ruthless strategy. Isn't that right? Yeah, HUD said, hey, are people actually going to do this? Are they abusing the system to try to game it so that they could actually take advantage of the non-recourse clause? And so HUD actually made some changes to go back to what it was prior to 2013 with the MIP structure being a half a percent added to the interest rate. And then they lowered the floor rate and made brokers like uh, C2 uh, loan originators and others across the country fight for lower lender margins and push those lender margins down, which basically killed the, um, the buzz we were having trying to get people into a system that could pay them a lot more and potentially cost HUD a lot of money. All right, so the follow-up question that a lot of people ask me is, why does HUD allow the line of credit to grow anyway? Right? It's a natural question to ask. Those who created this product many years ago looked at it and said, wait, older homeowners get more money, right? Because of actuarial life expectancy data. So if I'm aging a year and my property grows during that year, wouldn't I just refinance? If the line of credit doesn't grow, I'll just refinance. The next year I'm a year older, property value went up, I'll just refinance again and again and again. Okay, that's good for the loan originator. It's not really good for the client. And so HUD actually built in a disincentive to refinance by allowing older borrowers to qualify for more money just naturally with the line of credit growth. Does that make sense? All right. Uh, so can the growing Heckam line of credit pay for future care? Well, of course it can. Let's take a look at somebody with a million dollar current home value, age 70 with a 6.63, which is um, it's common right now, and you're going to add half a percent to your line of credit growth. So I'm 70 right now, and 10 years from now, I have a line of credit worth $522,000, guaranteed by the federal government. At that time, I can take that growing line of credit, and I can flip a switch for $20, and I can convert it into a tenure, which Wade was talking about, or I can convert it into any length term that I want. Now, Longer terms are going to give you less money, and shorter terms are going to give you a lot more money. All right? You squeeze that growing line of credit into one or two years, you're going to get a lot of money every month wired to your bank account every month for that term. Now, at the end of the term, the loan doesn't become due. You just stop getting money. Now, a uh, situation like uh, I, I have a parent that has Alzheimer's right now, and I know that based on how things are progressing, if my mother needs home care, she's not going to need it for five years. She's not going to need it for 10 years. Would it make sense to convert that into like a two-year term and use that to pay for home care? Absolutely. Okay, so it could be any length term that you want, but what I want to show you is the power of the line of credit growth compressed into five years, just using that as an example. A five-year term, that's 60 months, 10,308. If you're doing your math, 
10,308 times 60 months is a lot more than 522. Why? Because it's growing. It has an element of growth to it, as projected growth to it. All right, age 85, okay, that's the sweet spot for home care. All right, once you get into the mid 80s, that's generally when you're gonna need some assistance. I'm not talking about medical care, I'm talking about toileting and cleaning and helping with cooking and taking to appointments and companionship and things like that, which is actually very challenging to pay for. Okay, so those things often pop up in your mid 80s. Can an extra $14,704 every month help pay for that? Heck yeah. What about age 90? Okay, my dad's 94 right now. Hey, he's, doing, he's going strong, but you push the limits of that and you start talking about older ages, one million compressed into five-year term payments is almost $21,000 every month. So you can see as the line of credit grows, you can flip a switch and pay $20 to change the way your money is allocated and set that up in a term or 10-year payment. All right, let's go to the last scenario. David and Denise, hey, they're getting divorced. Uh, it's not something to laugh about. Um, it, divorce is devastating at any age. We know that, right? It, financially, it's devastating. But imagine you stop working, you're on a fixed income, and now you're faced with paying rent or a mortgage payment? That's even more devastating. And you've got to split up assets you've held for, in some cases, a very, very long time. Now, we know that between 1990 and 2010, silver divorce tripled. The silver divorce rates tripled during those years. Now, Silver divorce would be, silver divorce is 62 and older, gray divorce is 55 and older. Okay, gray divorce doubled. So we do know that the baby boomers are divorcing at unprecedented rates, and there's a lot of uh, demographic reasons for that we're not gonna get into. But let's say David and Denise are getting divorced. Well, now we gotta split up the home equity. We've gotta split up the liquid assets. Can each of them buy an $800,000 home with no monthly principal and interest mortgage payment and not destroy their retirement savings to do it? Yeah, that's the beauty of the Heckin' for Purchase product. So let's take David and Denise and let's take a look at the two examples. Actually, Wade referenced this. Oops, let's back up. And let's talk about option number one. We're gonna sell the marital assets. Okay, that's a common strategy. Okay, well, this is our house. Let's go ahead and sell it and uh, we're gonna go our separate ways. Each of them can use the proceeds they receive from the sale of the previous home plus their um, liquid savings and buy a comparable home with a heckin' for purchase. Now, who has their uh, real estate license here? Yeah, a lot of you. Can you count how many transactions that is? <laughs> That's three transactions. So I'll tell you a little story about the top realtor in my market. I was sitting at a pool party watching my kids jump in a pool, and so was the top realtor in my market was sitting right next to me. He goes, hey, Dan, what's the 30-year fix today? And I said, Paul, I have no clue. I don't follow the 30-year fix. That's not what I do. And I said, while we're at it, I don't work with you because I only work with elite realtors that know how to write a sales contract for a heckin' for purchase. And I said, before you're really offended by that statement, if I were you, I would buy me lunch this week so that I can explain to you how the heck of for purchase works. And he said, the what? I said, exactly, let's, let's meet for lunch, all right? And, and he said, okay, you've, you've got my attention, what's, what's the game? And I said, I can increase your listings, I can increase your sales, and I can increase your purchasing power with one product that Philip doesn't actually sell. I knew who his lender was. And he goes, okay, you got my attention, let's meet for lunch, and we scheduled lunch. And I spent an hour explaining the Heckin' for Purchase product, and he goes, this is brilliant. How do I not know about this? I said, well, every time you see somebody who's 62 and older, wants to relocate, upsize, downsize, or getting a divorce, you need to talk to me. Call me, I'll structure the deal. And I said, in fact, I'll make you this promise. The next deal I get, I'm gonna go ahead and give to you. Okay, so I, I actually had to, I had to um, do that. <laughs> I actually got a deal. It was probably a week or two later. It happened to be a divorce. And I had no idea this was gonna happen. He got the listing and two sales. Wow. You think he's a believer now? Yeah, and so were the clients. The clients got exactly what they wanted. Now, that's not the most common way to handle a divorce. The most common way to handle a divorce is with a spousal buyout. In which case, you're going to get a heckam on the property that one spouse is retaining. 
We are going to try to get as much money out of that as we can to pay a departing spouse who is going to use those funds to go buy another property using the HECA for purchase. You'll get one transaction there. The loan originator will get two. Okay, we'll get a HECM on the first, and we'll uh, do the HECM for purchase on the second. Now, those are the two ways to handle a, um, a divorce. My question for all of you realtors who raised your hand, are you linked at the hip with a divorce mediator or attorney? Who here is working with a divorce attorney? I very rarely get hands, thank you. I rarely get, get hands going on. I was just in Pittsburgh a couple weeks ago speaking about this. Nobody raised their hands. And I thought, you know where listings come from. If you're a realtor, this is where listings come from. They don't want to sell a home right now. They don't want to sell a home because they've got a 3% interest rate on it right now. They don't want to, but now they have to, right? That is where listings come from right now. So make sure you contact your local divorce mediator or family law attorney. Uh, you're going to thank me. Just uh, email me and say, hey, I got one. All right, so I'm going to wrap it up just talking about the books. Uh, actually, Scott referenced that. Understanding Reverse is now in its 10th year. And I have the loan originator and financial planning community to thank for updating, helping me update it every year. If something can be said cleaner, uh, more efficiently, then I update it. I also update it with new regulations. Let, uh, for those realtors in the group, let me tell you that there is an update to this book that talks about the new 6% seller contributions available with a reverse mortgage. Beautiful. For the first time ever, we can actually, um, the seller or builder can contribute up to 6% into the transaction on a purchase. Navigating reverse is for people who already have a reverse mortgage. Um, I can tell you that when the last borrower passes away, someone will panic. It's a certainty. Someone will say, what just happened? Mom and dad had a reverse mortgage. Now what do I do? This is their guidebook, all right? Um, Scott mentioned Rapid Reverse. It's a mobile app. To my knowledge, it's the only mobile app now that uh, offers a refinance or a purchase uh, for both iOS and Android devices, and you can do it in 10 seconds. I, can, I actually have fat fingers and tremors, and I can do it in seven, all right? So I, I, can, I do it. I use it several times a day. Uh, it is a subscription model. It's $4.99 a month or $49 a year. The one thing about being an app developer, once you put it on iOS and Android, you have to pay too. So I pay $49 a year too. But uh, just know that uh, this is a great modeling uh, software that actually shows current interest rates, current expected rates, not, not effective rates like we talked about the difference. I can actually compliantly quote effective rates without being a loan originator. So if anyone wants to use that, there are no compliance concerns whatsoever with quoting principal limits and net principal limits. And that's it for me. Thanks, guys. <laughs>